This blade is my gift to you. I killed a Russian soldier with it. It was the first man I ever killed. It was hard, but it has gotten easier. We'll kill every heathen who come to humiliate us on our own land. Really? You tell your brothers back in Afghanistan there's a message for them. America can't protect you. Allah can't protect you. And the KGB is everywhere. That's Joe Weisberg and Joel Field's critically acclaimed drama, The Americans. It follows two KGB agents posing as a married couple in the 1980s, living next door to an FBI agent during the height of the Cold War. In fact, they're so deeply undercover that even their own children are unaware of their secret. This has been my favorite TV show for its last three seasons, and while it consistently finds itself atop Kirk's year-end lists, there aren't that many people who watch it. So today, I want to talk about one sliver of the many ideas in the show that make it so special. Identity. I'm going to be doing it with minimal spoilers so we can talk about it for both people who have and haven't seen the show. I'm Jackson, and this is Ideas at Play. From its opening credits, we can tell that identity is going to be a big part of the Americans. Soviet and American imagery are intercut with each other, and the faces of our main characters, Philip and Elizabeth Jennings, are spliced into traditional American settings. That's not just to show us that Philip and Elizabeth are undercover, but also to hint at a larger idea of institutional identity. Institutions like religion, nationality, or even the brands that we buy carry with them their own beliefs and ideologies. And we exist at unique intersections of the institutions that we subscribe to. These sort of Venn diagrams create a representation of who we are, of our identity. And that's what makes the Cold War the perfect setting to explore this idea of how institutions can impact personal identity. The Cold War was a battle of two stark ideologies, capitalism and communism, so much so that as it stretched on for decades, each country began to define themselves just as much by being not Soviet or not American as they might the other way around. This is war. You think they would have done anything less to us? The Americans is a show all about spying, and not just the standard surveillance and theft that we're familiar with. What becomes quickly apparent is that the most vital resource is their ability to read people, figure out what they want, and manipulate that information to get what they need. In other words, it's all about trying to determine who people truly are, to define their personal identity. Philip and Elizabeth use this to work their targets, find angles into their identity, and create tailor-made approaches to influence them. Without giving too much away, Philip crafts a character named Clark to be the man of FBI Secretary Martha's dreams. He's calm, devoted, and a classic good guy in just the way Martha's previous boyfriend never was. It's nice to feel close to someone. Elizabeth blackmails a Navy officer by holding his homosexuality over his head, a secret identity which threatens a major part of his public identity, his military service. Characters aren't just doing this to their targets either. Philip and Elizabeth have an inherent distrust of everyone, including their handlers, and every interaction they have with their superiors is used to try to glean information behind what's presented. They're not just absorbing orders, they're also trying to determine whose interests the KGB really have at heart. You know, nothing is more important to them than your safety. Sounds like something is. Philip and Elizabeth keep secrets from each other as well, and often find themselves circling the other, re-examining their identities. As viewers, we're experiencing this too. As we learn more about each character, we try to figure out the Venn diagram that nails down what their identity is. I hide what I do. I don't hide who I am. But there's a difference between the model that we show the world and the one that truly drives us. After all, we play up certain allegiances more than others. We pretend to care about some institutions to fit in, when in reality, we don't. And it's not just our allegiances that we lie about, it's the idea structure underneath. The institutions themselves can be lies, and these distorted views of us are masks that don't reveal, but shield our true identities. I must not move. Not inside, no. Inside, you must be still. How do I do that? You have to believe what you say must commit to it, embrace it. So, in order for you to trick this wasp... I must lie to myself. Once you strip away the banners, the KGB and the FBI really aren't all that different. The way they define themselves, Philip and Elizabeth are fighting for freedom and truth in the same way that America has always defined itself. 
While they have to carry out some awful tasks throughout the show, they're not sociopaths. <sighs> Yusuf, I feel like shit all the time. Ultimately, the reason they carry them out is because they believe in their cause. This is exactly the kind of self-sacrifice that the United States has always celebrated. Here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. <laughs> You're gonna end up fighting every elected official in this country. Washington DC, by contrast, is depicted as bleak, gray, and in a constant state of winter. And it's no coincidence that this is the same way we've been taught to think about Russia. The show lingers on negative campaigns of each nation, from American support for South African apartheid to the Soviet war in Afghanistan. They're both morally ambiguous, but seemingly fighting for similar ideals. The lines between these countries become nearly as invisible as the war they're fighting. And this theme extends into personal identity. Philip becomes friends with Stan, not just because Philip recognizes the value in having an FBI agent as a friend, but because they truly come to care for each other. Elizabeth, for all her hatred of capitalism, cares deeply for her very American children. And nationality isn't the only institution under the microscope either. The Americans takes a hard look at the institution of marriage and deconstructs it. While it seems like it should be easy to identify Philip and Elizabeth as husband and wife, and try to figure out their identities from there, it's not that simple. Their marriage was arranged in the Soviet Union, and they were brought to the US together as a couple to make their cover more believable. When we got here, I was 22 years old. I was living in a strange house in a strange country with a strange man. It's a definite stretch to say that they're in love, but it's also a definite stretch to say that they're not. They're the only people in the world that can even approach understanding each other after having shared so much of their incredibly secret lives. Nothing here is as it seems and as we peel back each layer, what should become clearer only becomes more intricate. And that truth beneath it all isn't even completely apparent to Philip and Elizabeth. They know that there are truths that they have yet to see in each other, and that's because they know that institutions really just allow us to see what we want to see in people. They both, at times, yearn for a real marriage. Clark's relationship with Martha represents this kind of ideal partnership, but it's only a relationship that is allowed to exist because it is based on a complete lie. Martha falls quickly for him, and in many ways, so does Philip. The lie that he stands for is so intoxicating because it is completely unattainable. On the other side of the street, Stan has one of these real marriages, but is completely unaware of his wife's changing identity and the growing distance in their dynamic. As facts have changed throughout their relationship, the foundation that they built their marriage on becomes a lie itself. Meanwhile, Stan yearns for the same spy excitement that the Jennings experience, without ever understanding what that might actually entail. I'd forgotten the heart-stopping thrills. Plus, we got the vending machines. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are we gonna live like this? We'll get used to it. Like we got used to everything else. The dynamic between these two marriages, lies in their own way, is driven home visually by the fact that their houses are identical, which adds another layer of identity, that of suburban America. The Americans isn't deconstructing these institutions purely to make social statements. Instead, it's really a commentary on our own personal identities. They're intricate intersections of beliefs that read like a labyrinth of false walls and hallways. We're complicated creatures, and the joy of this show is in watching characters just as complicated as us and try to learn who they really are. As I mentioned in a previous video, TV is a character's medium. The focus has always been on characters and their relationships, but The Americans is taking it a step further. By studying the very structure of what makes up a character's identity, it's looking into the mechanisms that form and change us. While it's easy to say that we're products of our environment or our upbringing, The Americans is showing us how many moving pieces there are in that idea, and asking if that's all we truly are. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Almost definitely I'm going to do a deep dive of the Americans in the future, but in the meantime I just wanted to make sure that people knew about it. The story, characters, and themes are so intricate that it's really hard to get too into it without spoilers, but I hope you still like the video. I also want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's been supporting the channel. It just passed the 500 subscriber mark, and I'm excited to keep going and see where it goes. Thanks again. Thank you.